everyone, welcome back to Legalese Translator. My name is Heather Hoyt Twin, and joining me in this video is Heather Douglas. Hi. Hi. So uh, in this video, we're going to uh, talk uh, about another word that pops up uh, in, uh, when we bring motions, um, and that is the word factum. So when you're preparing your paperwork um, for, for motions, uh, you, uh, you have to, of course, consult Rule 3710 uh, in the Rules of Civil Procedure. And in that rule, it, it talks about um, uh, how you have to um, su submit a factum uh, with your motion record. So Heather, I was uh, going to ask you, um, if you don't mind, uh, you could explain to us what the word factum means. Factums are required for certain motions. And they're a written argument that you file with the court. And they usually have a certain format, but each court has a practice direction or a certain set of rules that may explicitly say what format and what page limit it should be in. But generally, you're going to see a common structure to the factum. Okay. There are usually about five parts to a factum. The first part is an overview. And that will put into context what you're seeking and why. Mm. And it's a short description, short summary of your written argument. The second part is the facts. And the third part is the issues that you are asking the court to decide. And you may, might also see the law in that section or the law put into a separate section into part four. And then lastly, part five is the order requested from the court. Okay, so um, I have another question. Uh, I, in rule 37, uh, it says the factum contains fact and law, which I think you also mentioned. Um, and so if I'm a lazy person and <laughs> And I, um, I just, because I, there's just so much paperwork that you have to do a notice of motion, you have to do an affidavit. Um, so now this factum is like a third piece of uh, paperwork that I have to do. So um, can I just, um, just repeat, just cut and paste, copy and paste uh, the, the facts that I had in the affidavit and just kind of like bring them over to the, to the factum? Usually the factum will summarize the facts in the evidence, in the affidavits and you will pinpoint in the factum which affidavit it is from and what paragraph of the affidavit that the information comes from. Oh, so no, you shouldn't copy and paste your affidavit into your factum. So Heather, um, based on your um, extensive practice experience, do you have any tips to give us uh, when it comes to writing factum? Yes, keep it simple and make the judge's job easier. Think about the reader and write clearly, simply, and put your point first. Don't make the judge guess what the motion or what the relief you are seeking all the way to the end. And when you're addressing the facts, address what, where, when, and why. And also, when you're dealing with the law, be credible. If there's an adverse authority, put it in there. If it's something that the court will have to deal with, then don't hide from the court key case law in that area. Wow, so those are really great suggestions. Thank you so much, Heather, for uh, letting us know. And so uh, to our viewers, um, if you would like to receive a, a, a uh, what we call precedent or example of, an, of a factum, um, please feel free to email me um, and I will have the details um, listed uh, below in the description. So don't forget to check it out. Uh, thank you, Heather, for um, clearing that up for us. Um, and uh, if you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you can stay notified of our upcoming videos. Thanks, Heather, um, for um, being here today to explain the word factum. It's always a very scary word to me in the beginning. Um, thank you. Thank you. And thank you everyone for watching. See you at the next video. Bye.